Okay, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to talk you through the settings I use for the Canon EOS R for weddings. I'm not going to go through every single setting. I'm just going to stick to the stuff that I've changed away from default. The thing you should do with this video is watch it, take what's useful for you, incorporate that into how you use the camera, and then dish the things that you don't like. There's no right or wrong way to do this. It's always just personal preference, but these are the settings that work well for me. So the first thing is I'm obviously shooting in RAW. Dual pixels disabled. Image review I leave off because it's a mirrorless camera. You're seeing the pictures already before you take them. Although I will switch this on if it, when it comes to the reception. I'm using flash as a fill flash. Then I'll switch the image review on for a while. Release without the card I switch off. That means it doesn't take a photo if there's no card in the camera. Now this is kind of important. These lens corrections, I leave them all switched off. And the reason I do that is because they will slow the camera down. It's a whole load of processing that the camera has to do to work this out every time you take a photo. So if you, let's say you have image review on, you take a photo and it takes a moment to show you that photo, that's because it's having to do all this processing beforehand. So if you want to speed up the buffer of the camera, the processing time, and then consequently the right speed of the camera, you're going to want to switch all of these features off. Okay, so in here, the ISO speed settings, you can see what they are. I leave the minimum shutter speed at 1 2 50th of a second because that tends to be what I use for aperture priority as a minimum shutter speed. I would normally configure my C1 and C2 custom profiles in the camera to be a 250th of a second and 1 1 25th of a second on each one. And the settings would otherwise be the same. It just means I can drop down my shutter speed quickly um, if I want to or raise it up for if I want to stop people moving. Auto lighting optimizer I switch this off for the same reasons as before uh, that it will just increase the processing time and highlight time priority I switch off as well. Okay and the picture style that I use is neutral but I've changed some of the settings and I'll explain to you why. If I go into it press info um, the the sharpness strength is at three. I found that that's okay, but the contrast I've dropped that down to the minimum amount. As you can see here, that's where the contrast is. And the reason I do that is because when I'm looking through the camera, I want to be able to see the picture with the most dynamic range possible. And that means using the neutral picture style and then dropping the contrast right down because it's easier to get a more accurate exposure if you can see more information in the highlights and the shadows. If you have like a more contrasty profile, it can lead you to making unnecessary changes. Like let's say someone's got more lights, window lights on them and you think the highlights are blowing when they're not. Um, it can make you make changes that you didn't really need to. When you can see more of the dynamic range, then you're going to be in a better position to make those adjustments. I leave the saturation where it is and the color tone as well. It's important to remember though, when you're using the these picture profiles, they're only going to affect what you see through the viewfinder and on the screen on the back of the camera. They're not going to have any effects on the raw file as such. These are only JPEG settings, but the image that you see on the screen is the JPEG rendition of the RAW file, but that will not record to the card. It's only affecting what you see, which is because I'm shooting in RAW, that's why I want to use a picture profile that's closest to the RAW file. And by taking the neutral profile and then dropping the contrast down to the minimum, that's the closest I can get to an actual representation of the RAW file. Um, long exposure noise reduction, high ISO noise reduction, all these things, I'll just leave them switched off. There's nothing really particularly relevant on that page. The anti-flicker anti shoot, I enable that. That's just for when you've got, um, uh, that helps when you've got fluorescent light bulbs indoors and they flicker a bit. Uh, it helps the timing because when those tube bulbs that you get in buildings like, like a long tube, they flicker and it helps keep the brightness at the same level because otherwise you can end up with a mixture of light and dark exposures. Um, eye detection, I switched that on. Now the touch and drag settings are for moving the focus point around with your thumb. And I'll show you how I do it because I think this is, well, I think it's the best way to do it. So I enable, enable it and I leave the position method at relative, but I change the, the area to the top right. So that means it's just this part of the screen that's working as the thumb drag, which means that you're not kind of, it's quicker to move the focus points around and it's easier. And I find that that doesn't get in the way of your nose or your face so much. And, um, I've, I found that to work better. Uh, peaking settings I'll have is on, high and red. Sometimes I use that for a detail shot. And focus guide I leave to on. And that's the thing where you get these two um, 
these three sort of bars that move towards each other for helping you with focus. I find them quite useful. You can look that up online as well to see what they are. Now, this is an interesting one. There's the, the jury's kind of out on what settings to use with this, but I'm pretty sure that these are the best ones and I'll explain to you why. I turn the tracking sensitivity and the acceleration of the tracking all the way to the highest point. That means that the focus is going as fast as possible. Now, some people could have said, would say that that's too jittery, but my argument on it is that with the EOS R and mirrorless cameras, it's very easy to shoot with wide aperture lenses and use the eye tracking. But the thing is, when you go to a wider aperture, your depth of field is smaller. And I want to have the focus be as qu quick moving and sensitive and jittery as possible because my testing that I've done, I found it to be more accurate for using wide aperture lenses. So if you're using like a, a 35 1.4 or whatever you're using, I found that to be getting a better keeper rate. Now I have some friends who have this camera and they've gone in the opposite direction with it and they've ended up switching to this way after having those issues regarding depth of field and so on. So I would urge you to play around with it, but if you want to use any wider aperture primes, I think this is the best way to do it. Okay, um, the one that's relevant here is the, when you're in a one shot autofocus, are you gonna prioritize being in focus or pressing the shutter button? And I switch it to pressing the shutter button. I do that with every camera that has that setting on it that I've used. And the reason I do it is because I've found that most often the camera is pretty much in focus already when I press the button. If you switch it over to focus, it won't let you take the photo until it's absolutely sure it's in focus. But what I've found is that it usually is in focus anyway. And when you switch it over to focus, so it's absolutely sure it's in focus, what happens is you end up missing shots because the camera won't take the picture because it's not 100% sure. Just on testing it and trying it out, I, again, I found that it is in focus like most, almost all the time anyway. And I get more shots captured by having it switched set on release than missing shots because it's not 100% sure. On the AF method, this is the different types of focusing um, methods that you can use. So whether you're going to use face tracking, a small square or any of these different shapes. And for weddings, I switch all of the others off and I only want to be able to switch between face tracking and a single point. And the reason I do that is because I set one of the buttons on the camera to just flick between the two modes. So what I want to do when I'm sh if I'm shooting a wedding is I want to be able to instantly switch between tracking the face and moving a, a, a single square point around to focus wherever I want to. I want to be able to switch tracking of the face off instantly at a touch of a button. I'll show you how I set that up because it's really useful to be able to go from a square, which you can move around to tracking a face and back again instantly. Uh, one thing I switch on, on this here is the image jump. So it's when you turn the dial, when you're reviewing your pictures, uh, I switch it to one because the default's 10. So instead of skipping like loads of pictures, I just switch it to one. So I'm scrolling through one picture at a time. Uh, file numbering is set to continue. Auto rotate, I switch to on, just turns the uh, image around for you. Okay, so here I have the uh, brightness set to just the middle and the color tone set to standard and the disable the beep. Now the shooting info display so what I do for this is these are the different, when you press the info button on the back of the camera, what information do you get up? So I have these two screens set up for myself. Um, they give me the basic information and the other one gives me the histogram. And what that means is that if I show you here, it just allows me to have pretty much an on off button like this with the info button. So there's only two screens. I'll show them again in a minute. So one brings up the info and the histogram and the other one just goes to a more basic setting. So that, and that's the same in the viewfinder as well. I don't want to cycle through lots of different settings. Essentially what I want to do is get the, the histogram up and remove it. Um, but also gra grab a few other settings too. So the, so the way I've done that is I've got number one set up like this. If you want to copy it, just pause the video. And I've got number three set up like this. And again, that's just to give me a really simple way of uh, flicking the histogram on and off and getting a few more settings. 
Display, I just switched to smooth, so it means that you're getting a nice smooth uh, viewfinder. I have the display settings or auto, so it switches between the viewfinder and the screen automatically. On this page, one of the things I've changed over is the safety shift. I have it set at TV, AV, and what this is, is that when you're shooting an aperture priority or a shutter priority, it means that if your camera maxes out, let's say you're shooting an aperture priority and you're shooting an aperture of 1.4, um, the camera will change the ISO and the uh, shutter speed for you accordingly. But let's say it gets too bright, the, the picture will overexpose and blow out. What it means is that it will at that point then change the uh, aperture down. It won't just leave it fixed at 1.4 if it's going to completely ruin the shot. So that's called safety shift. And the other one I leave on is same exposure for new aperture. So that means that if I'm shooting, let's say I'm at 1.4, I'm in aperture priority, and then I decide I want to be at 2.8, what it will do is it will adjust the ISO to give me the same exposure at the new aperture. Okay, so customized buttons is quite important. There's uh, some of the most fundamental settings in the camera. The MFN button on the top, this is the small button next to the shutter. I have this to change the direct method of selection, uh, the type of focusing. So what that means is when I press it, I will go between face detect, so as I'm pressing it now, and the small square. So I can select what I want to focus on using my thumb. But if I want to face track, I just press that button on top and it switches. And that's really quick and simple. I don't want to cycle through lots of different modes. Okay, the other one I changed at the back here is the star button, and I have that switched to ISO. So when I want to change the ISO, all I do is I press my thumb down on the star button and I wheel the top wheel around to change the ISOs. I'll show you that working now. So you see the ISOs down here at the bottom. I press my thumb down, change it, and it changes the ISO. Okay, the next one I do is I make this button that's at the top here be the function to set the AF point back to the center. So if my focus points off to the side somewhere, I want to get it back quickly into somewhere I can move it more easily. I'll just press this button and it puts the focus square back to the center for me. And the other one I change is the button on the left here. And what I do is I use that to switch tracking on and off. I'll show you. So when I'm here like this, you see it changes from servo to one shot. And you see how the focus points over to the side. If I just press the up button, it goes back to the middle. And those are the custom function buttons. Touch bar on the back, I turned everything off because I, it doesn't really work. I think everyone's pretty much just accepted that now. And lastly, for the my menu at the end, um, you can ignore some of the other settings there because there's certain things that I've used for video. Um, the only thing I'd put in there is the ISO speed settings to be able to change the um, minimum shutter speed uh, nice and quickly. I would leave that there. And that's it. So the way I've set the camera up is, is fairly simple and my operations as I'm using it are really um, using the button on the top here to switch face tracking on and off, resetting the center point with the up button, switching tracking on and off, changing the ISO by pressing my thumb down on the star button, that's it. It's all you need. I think it's a really good camera actually for shooting weddings because you can set it up in this simple way. I like to keep, I strip the camera down to a more basic um, series of settings like this for weddings because I just want to get to the things that I need. If I can move a focus point around really quickly and if I, if I can switch the face tracking, which will be with eye detect on and off at the touch of a button. I can switch tracking on and off at the touch of a button and I can recover my focus point to the center at the touch of a button. That's it, I'm done. And with the EOS R, I know one of the questions will be, do you shoot aperture priority or uh, manual most of the time? So what I do is I'll shoot manual as much as I can. If the lights, if I'm in an environment where the light's changing too quickly and I'm thinking too much about my exposures, I'll switch it to aperture priority because I need, because there's a time pressure at weddings. So then I'll switch to aperture priority to make sure that I can get the shot. And when I'm in aperture priority, I do like to have the shutter speed at one 250th of a second because it's good at 
freezing motion in people and you will get sharper photos like that. One of the things I noticed with people, just to bring that up, which is kind of separate, is that um, I noticed a lot of people saying, oh, I'm not always getting sharp photos. People not getting sharp photos is usually down to the shutter speeds being a little bit too low. If you bring them up just slightly, what I'm talking about with the shutter speed being too slow is sometimes people get the teeniest bit of motion blur and I mean really minuscule, but it makes the picture look a bit soft. Um, so I think 250 of a second is a good point where it kind of stops that. So anyway, I hope that was useful. Please like and subscribe. It would uh, be really great for me if you did that. And I'll catch you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.